Hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast today. I'm Shelby Jo Long, your host, and I love to use this opportunity to introduce you to some genius entrepreneurs out there that have transformed their expertise into an income stream to inspire you to think about how you do your own business differently. It's an opportunity to really highlight your expertise and to influence other people. Today, I'm so excited for this interview because I've known this group of people for many, many years. And now we have just started working on, on actually doing that process and transforming their genius into an income stream. And But there was a lot of process that happened before we started working together. So I'm excited to tell their story, excited for them to tell their story and to tell you a little bit of background because they are extremely successful business owners. They've been have an open business, survived COVID for over 15 years. And now they're going to teach other people how to do that process themselves. So I introduce to you the KDR Solutions team, Robin, David, and Kristen. And I'll have them all introduce themselves to you. And then we'll get on to the podcast. So Robin, go ahead. Hello. My screen just switched to saying mute. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. So I'm Robin Clausen, and as KDR Solutions, one of the, the co-owners and co-founders, I am considered the healthcare entrepreneur in our trio. Um, David and I actually, husband and wife optometry team years ago, bought a practice um, as tons of other healthcare providers have, not really knowing how much we had to care about business um, to be successful for our patients. So um, we had a few rough years where honestly, we didn't love it. Um, and we brought Kristen aboard pretty early on in our practice. She became, she started as an optician. We trained her from scratch. She'd never been in the field before. And years later, she became our practice manager. Um, and the three of us kind of went through a transformation in our careers where we finally had to just get out of our own way, ask for help and um, learn how to grow ourselves. So we hired a coach, a phenomenal coach that worked with all of us individually and as a group. Um, we'll always remember him. We can hear him in our mind saying, are you going to be an entrepreneur or an optometrist? And David and I hated that question because we thought we're not supposed to talk about those two things together. We went into this to help people. Um, and his goal was to get us to where we could comfortably say, I'm an entrepreneur who uses the art of optometry to achieve my personal and professional goals. Um, and he got us there and you realize pretty quickly that you get kind of hooked on self-growth and learning and you start to really realize how far that's pushed you and you want to help others kind of go through that tra same transformation. So he encouraged us for years before we finally were brave enough to take the plunge, but to start teaching other practice owners, whether it's dentistry or chiropractic to, um, to get out of their own way and to learn new things and to, to put some tools in place to really grow and become successful for themselves and their patients. Great. That's, it's so inspiring to hear you talk about Russ. He's such an inspiring individual, but he had a dramatic influence on you all. And I can see that all. And now that things are coming to fruition, it's really fun to see that. So David, speaking of systems, that reminds me uh, about your kind of area of expertise. Can you introduce yourself to our audience? Yeah, so I'm David Bauer. As Robin said, I'm her husband and also one of the founders of KDR. And my area of expertise is on the patient experience and the systems that go into place to be able to ensure that a patient has a great experience time and time again, no matter when they come to your practice. So, you know, a lot of us go to places, whether it's medical practice, dental practice, aesthetic spa, and we get there and sometimes we have a fantastic experience. And sometimes it's like, man, what happened? And, you know, what my goal is for people is to always have a consistent, exceptional patient experience. And really the way that you do that is create systems for your team. Um, you want to make sure that it is done the same time, same way every single time so that you can make sure that that patient has a great experience. And so that's kind of my area of expertise for KDR. The systems, the patient experience. I feel like I'm feel like I'm living that right now. And there is truly a difference when you go into places and it has to be intentional and right. all of those things. I have learned so much by just working in, in the business part of your space too. It's been really amazing. But Kristen, I'm excited to, for you to introduce yourself and talk about your team approach and the mastermind behind the management. 
Yeah, yeah. So I'm the other third of KDR Solutions. It's nice kind of going last because Robin and David covered a lot of ground. Uh, but yes, so my focus is on the kind of organizational business culture, team culture, and engagement, and the mindset that you have to have going into that. Because even though we are private practice consultants, people are people, you know, regardless of where they are, you know, they have the same, you know, feelings, thoughts, things like that. So my focus is really on team culture and engagement and the mindset that you have to have in order to make those systems that David was talking about, to make those systems stick, to make them work, to make the team care about them and want to come along with them because then you can focus on the business side, like Robin was talking about. You need all of those pieces. You need the people, you need the systems, and then you need the, you know, the business knowledge and confidence um, to be successful. So, I mean, they kind of covered most of it. Like Robin said, I've been with them for a long time. And there wasn't necessarily one specific turning point, but just lots of examples over the year that you know Robin kind of alluded to where we ultimately felt like you know we had a responsibility responsibility to share this information with other businesses because we've been in their shoes you know so we we felt a responsibility almost to share this with people that's and that mom I'm so excited to talk about that more because that's feeling the responsibility of it, but I mean, you also have done it. You've also grown your practice. There's been mm -hmm. all sorts of challenges involved with that. I'd kind of like to dig into that a little bit, but you've been in practice, practice management. Well, practice has been open for about 15 years. Is that right? Yep. Mm -hmm. 13 years. Yeah. I mean, you're, you have sustained a pandemic. Yeah. You have yeah. adjusted to all sorts of challenges. You have grown from, you went from one building to another building and a whole new space. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's been lots of transition that you all have experienced as a, an optometry Institute. And now it's like, now it's that you have the opportunity to teach others that and responsibility, I think is one thing, but what was the inspiration to think about, think about maybe I can help influence other people. It's, I mean, you're in a service industry, so it's just a very different type of service that you're providing. Can you, is there something that sticks out as an influence for that? And the three of you working together, that's also unique, right? There's three founders. So how did that all come about? I can yeah. speak to that a little bit. Um, you get in your own little bubble when you spend so much time and effort working on your own business and you see these little changes over time. And it's not until you look back that you see we've come a long ways and here's the formula and the systems and the mindset that, that helped us do it. And, um, so this coach that we referred to, he actually told us for years, you need to give back to your profession. You need to teach this. And we'd say, we aren't anything special. What, I mean, what do we know that they don't know? And, you know, and he would always say, are you lucky or are you good? Because you're not just lucky, you're good. And you need to do this. You should do this. Um, and then David and I were given an opportunity. Um, one of our vendors sponsored us to go to a practice management um, group to kind of check it out. And it's this kind of this brainstorming group where you get in this room with other practices and you ask each other questions and you pick their brains and what are they doing that's working and and it was fun but we also realized by the end of the weekend um everyone in the room was asking us questions and it's because we'd already tried what they'd tried and we should we should tell them about this because it'll work better and we came back from that kind of knowing that you know what someday we could do this mm -hmm. we we do know things that other people don't know and haven't been coached on and, and we could do this and they could be having so much more fun in their profession and in their practice. Um, if they could learn some of these tools that we've got. Mm -hmm. And a couple more examples, like to just play off of that is we had finally gotten enough, you know, patient reviews that repeated the things back to us that we were being intentional about the patients without us obviously ever telling them 
were telling us, you know, we had quality standards, that they appreciated our systems, that they loved our patient engagement. And then uh, another example was sometimes team members would leave Bauer and Claussen, whether that was, you know, to pursue other opportunities or, you know, um, take employment elsewhere, would actually reach out to us and want to come back um, saying, you know what, I tried it someplace else and I actually didn't like it as much as Bauer and Claussen because I do miss the systems. I do miss the standards. I miss the quality and consistency. So we just kind of, I feel like, had enough repeats of those types of situations where we were like, we can do this and we do need to do this. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Anything to add to that, David? Um, kind of in a little different vein, you know, every practice has their pain points, uh, no matter what business you're in. And we've had a lot of pain points along the way. And, you know, whether it be staffing issues or engagement of our staff or, gosh, I want to be able to do this with my patient, but how do I systematize that? And so our goal is to give um, practices tools and steps and tangible things that they can do to get past those pain points so that they can actually practice the level they want to and make sure that, you know, most providers are in the exam room and they can't monitor the front team. They can't monitor the, the back of the house, the front of the house all the time. So we want to make sure that they have the tools that they need to make sure that what they want done is done the way they want it done. Um, and that's through systems. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, uh, I'll tell, I'll tell you all a little story because you haven't heard this story yet because, because Riley and Savannah visited our class on Wednesday this week. And it's just a true testament to your systems and to the leadership structure and the leadership empowerment that you've made as a part of your business, because you know that that's key to the patient experience. They were tremendous leaders in my, in my classroom and they had so many good examples and it was just really fun to have them. But I think that's a testament to say that people can reach out to you or want to reach out to you to talk about how these things were developed because they want to develop it in their own business. And that makes you a leader in your industry. So that's something to be said for sure. I really enjoyed having them in class. Yeah. I feel like that's something that sets us apart is I think there's a lot of consulting groups or coaches that, you know, talk about the theory of leadership and the concept of leadership ideas. And while, yes, you do need that information, it's very frustrating to not have um, actionable items or tangible things that you can do that will show a result in the end. So I think that's what sets us apart is we're actually going to give tools, we give solutions, we give action steps that you can see will make a difference, will make an impact. And that's come from your experience. And mm -hmm. I think that's, I think that's so important. So mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about this. Talked a little bit about the background of Bauer and Klaus. And let's, the, what, do, what do you think has been the most challenging as you're stepping into this new role as leaders in private practice management, in private practice growth? You're clearly leaders in optometry and in your field. So what is, talk to me about some challenges that you've run into. Um. I know one thing, so we've designed these programs and, and different kind of entry points to the program, whether you're wanting to start by working on your patient experience first and then start working on your team and then learn more about your business. Um, but you need all these things. And so we knew he had those categories, but to try to take the knowledge that we've gradually built over more than a decade and say, where do we start? Hi. And we start working on a program and, and filming and doing stuff. And we're like, wait, we're telling them this, but we actually have to teach them this first or they can't, you know, so finding kind of an order and how to put the cookbook together and um, arrange it in a way that's accessible and doable for people um, and builds on each other so that they can gain all this knowledge efficiently, but know where to start them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, you know, just the, the teacher in me 
And that's, that's why I do what I do is to, to, because that you have to, it's a step-by-step -step process and you have to build upon things as you know, from the past years of having building, th building things and you get feedback and you change, and then you have to do something else. And then you get feedback and then your system is working, but it takes a while to get there. But where do you start? I think that's a, that's a, that's something that we've all discovered in the past couple of months, just working together is like, where do we start and what tools do you need? So it's been, it's all part of the puzzle, right? So it's all coming together. Yeah. Yeah. What other challenges have we discovered, Kristen or David? Did, is there a challenge challenge that you've discovered as you step into this new role? Well, I think the marketing piece is challenging. And from the point of recognizing potential clients and reaching out to potential clients, but doing it in a way that isn't, that doesn't offend people because you don't want to reach out to someone and say, Ugh, I, you know, really realized that this was lacking or this wasn't good and we could really help you because that's not what is actually going on. All providers want to provide good service. They want to be good employers. They want to run a successful business. So it's approaching it from, you don't know what you don't know, you know, and that's okay. Right. It's not bad or wrong. It's just, if they have a openness and a willing to grow, we can support them and provide them tools that will take them to a place that they never thought that they'd be able to get to. Right. Right. The, mar the marketing question is so interesting too, because mm -hmm. as successful service providers in the optometry world, I think it's a different kind of marketing, right? You're selling, you're, you're not marketing you, you're marketing, you're not marketing you and your knowledge, you're marketing your profession. Does that sound similar? Does that, or is it just me yeah. that thinks no. that is different. You know, I, think, I just think it is because it's yeah. more personal. Yeah, like being an optometrist, yes, you market um, some, but a lot of your marketing is word of mouth because you see 20, 30 patients a day and every one of those we hope has a great experience since we have the systems in place. And so you have 20 people every day, a potential marketer for you. Um, whereas this space, it's it's different. You know, you don't work with 20, 30 patients or 20, 30 clients a day, and maybe you work with one or two. And so it's just a different, different uh, uh, area there that's that's challenging to navigate. Sure. And it's a different kind of relationship for sure. It's it's you know what you you all are stepping into are more of a yes, it's got a lot of information, but there's a long-term relationship there. And that's a, it's a totally new space. So a, a totally foreign space that I imagine, I speak from my own, own background, moving from the world of academia into the world of consulting. I'm an expert in one place, but then I step over to this other place and I haven't, when I did step over, you know, I hadn't wor been working with businesses one-on-one and I'd done a lot of trainings and whatnot, but it, it's a totally different world because stepping into the space where you're not the only expert anymore. So I would imagine that's, that might have some resonate with what some of you, you all are feeling. And I believe that a lot of genius entrepreneurs are in that same space. They have something that is their genius, their solutions worked for them. Now, how do I teach that to other people? And right. Kristen, you talked to that about where, you, where do you start? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just think it's so exciting because it's, you have the experience and you have the background and uh, now you're going to launch it. Let's talk about that. What, it, what is coming up? What, what is next for you all? Uh, as far, talk to us about what the next couple of months look like for you, as far as your launch is concerned. Well, we have, um, we have some programs wrapped up that are ready to be available and we've been in our pilot phase, which has been fun. We've worked with a couple practitioners um, to sit them through some of this and um, pick their brains and them get to pick our brains and kind of find out what is the need of practices out there and where we're coming from. Are they ready to receive that kind of information? Um, so we've gotten some great feedback, made some tweaks, and it's just, it's exciting that we're going to be ready to make it available and, and help people out. And 
And it's going to be interesting to see which practitioners out there are willing to be vulnerable enough to say, I would like a little bit of help. I don't know everything and um, I should, I should learn. So we all kind of go to school thinking that we're learning how to be a doctor or a nurse or a dentist, and then we get out and we should be done with learning. And, and it's just not the case, but it takes a lot of docs um, a while to actually get comfortable with that idea and admit it. So that's going to be different too. Absolutely. And just make sure that the clients do the work. You know, yes, we can give get them access to this program, but if they don't do the work, it's not going to be successful. So they have to, like Robin said, be very open to the idea of thinking outside the box, getting uncomfortable, being okay with being uncomfortable. Uh, but ultimately, they will be more successful, more happy because they won't be putting out fires. They won't be having as many. There's always pain points but they'll know the tools and this tactics to how to deal with them, which is, which is crucial. And, and yeah. even practices that are already successful can still grow more by opening yeah. themselves up to all knowledge. Um, one thing that we've been, we've worked on for years is the systems that got you to where you are may not be the systems that are going to get you to where you need to go. So just because you're successful so far, doesn't mean it's time to stop and be comfortable. You have to keep going. And, and um, we're going to kind of coach people on that too, of get out of your own way and take the next step. Right. Because if you're not growing, you're shrinking. Absolutely. This is not the first place I've heard that. You hear yes. that all the time. Yep. If you're not innovating and moving right. and trying to find something new, then well, it's right. then you're not growing because if you don't adapt to the new environment, that's that's uh that's the that's the challenge of business is being able to be nimble and adapt. So I think that's key. I I think often when when we work together and when we talk about your program and and having it digital, I think that's pr- Probably not having something digital is not the ideal interaction that you want to have with a client. However, it makes it, it's an easy asset to have for your business. And then it just makes the conversation and the, the consulting relationship that you have with your client just that much richer because they already have the information. They've consumed the information. They have assets to work with. I just think it's a perfect fit. So I don't know if you all were thinking digital before you got into the consulting space, but I think it's just a perfect fit. So yeah. And it's a way to reinforce the message because I mean, we know from experience from coaching, just because you hear the information once doesn't mean that it is going to sink in, (laughs) you know, so the digital asset, like you talked about, it's a great, great way to you know, establish that knowledge first, they can, you know, absorb it at their own pace. And then we can come and, you know, do like customized coaching, um, coaching with them, reinforcing the, those same principles that are in that resource. Mm -hmm. Because then that highlights you. So I know that you, I know that you all are presenting at million cups here in Billings next week. Yes. Is that correct? Yep. Nine o'clock in the morning at Rock 31. That's is that our official launch date? Should have the website by then. <laughs> maybe uh, don't have let's there maybe maybe done with launch this. next Wednesday. <laughs> Second round of launch next week. Yes. You can always we'll, edit. We'll get, you can pivot. You can always pivot. Always yeah. edit. That's that's exciting to be able to to do that. And then we're available. So then the marketing game begins and then all of that happens. So it's, it's exciting to finally be here, but as, as Robin, as you said, that's just the beginning. It's only the beginning point. Now you have the asset and now it's, now we got to figure out where to put you in the market. So there's a definite need for it. So it's, it's exciting to be at that phase. So Yes. What else can, where can our audience find you and where can they learn about not only Bauer and Claussen, but where can they learn about this new program? Yeah. So go for it, David. Maybe let David take. (laughs) I'll take this one. I'm kind of the tech guy too. Um, So obviously we have Facebook. We've got our website. That's almost ready to be live um it's just in a construction phase right now but so you close. maybe want to tell people what the facebook and yes so okay. um our website is privatepracticeadvisors.com 
And then Facebook, you can search um, KDR Solutions. And then on LinkedIn as well is also KDR Solutions. Um, and so we post uh, some videos, some informational blogs, things like that on all those uh, platforms. And so those would be the best way to keep in touch with us and just get little tidbits of the program and just things that will help you on a day-to-day -day basis, um, little things. Um, so that's the best way to keep in contact with us and reach out. And I'd say email us, even though our website isn't fully viewable yet. Um, we've got our email up and running. We'd love to hear from you and give you more info. I believe we are info at privatepracticeadvisors.com. Is that right, David? Yeah, that is correct. Info at privatepracticeadvisors.com. So we'd love to hear from you. The website's going to be soon. Yes, very soon. It's coming. It's coming. Final letters, yes. But there's no reason that we, you talked about everything that's in your program and now people can have, know, know what that is and they can move forward with the, that information. Because right. yes, it exists in the program, but really you could work with anybody and take them through that process right now because it's all here and you've done that. Right. So it, it's really exciting that you've launched in that way. So you really are already launched. You just don't have your website. That's Correct. right. Yes. What? Uh, let's talk about one last piece of advice that you have for entrepreneurs out there that are thinking, I want to start a business, but I'm not really sure what to do. Maybe it's out of my ideas. How do I step into this space? Do we have a piece of advice we could give them? Um, I'd say find a need and go for it. Because if you if there's a need out there, you will have clients. Absolutely. Uh, just since we are in this process, you know, we're very close. We're very close to launching. And just from the experience of going through it, Rob and David and I aren't, um, we aren't, what's the word? We're not like uh, super spontaneous, like, you know, I just like to be impulsive, <laughs> right? Right. We're not impulsive. We very, we think things through a lot and we research and deliberate and we are sure before we make a move, but after going through this process, I would encourage people and give people the advice of do it faster, you know, like make mistakes faster, uh, so you can learn from them. You know, it goes against our nature and it's very easy for me to give that <laughs> advice rather than take it, but it's just make mistakes faster. I feel like that advice is out there, but it's very, it's very true. You know, just get a product out there, get it launched, make mistakes, learn from it, and then, you know, try again. Absolutely. Yeah. Spoken like a true entrepreneur. <laughs> you gotta get your idea out there. You gotta find a need, yeah. fill it, and then then yeah. get the response, and then fix it, and do it again. So yeah. that's a yeah, that's a that's a good piece of advice, but a lesson that's hard to learn, especially yeah. from the, and it's from the perspective. Hard to take your own advice. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Robin, anything that you any advice that you would give? Yeah, I'm gonna be the only one that gives us a shameless plug and say take KDR Solutions Foundations in business principles, because I would <laughs> say when David and I took over our first business, one of the biggest things is we were afraid of what we didn't know. And it was really overwhelming to ask financial questions because you didn't feel like you knew the lingo. Um, and that's one thing we want to help private practices, but anyone who's an entrepreneur of the basics of how do you talk to your accountant about your P&L, about your balance sheet? why is it I'm profitable and yet there's not money in the bank and things like that. Um, you don't know what you don't know. So just be willing to learn and try it and, and ask questions. There's a ton of people out there um, who have a ton of knowledge and want to help you. Mm -hmm. And you all have consistently surrounded yourself with people to take you to the next level and to be mentors in that. And I am happy to be a part of that group. So because I have learned so much as it uh, throughout this whole process too. It's been so much fun. Thank you. For those of you that don't know, um, Robin and David were my first opticians when I moved here. <laughs> so we've known each other for quite some time, but it has been a great introduction to KDR Solutions. And I'm really excited that you have the chance to tell us about what you have to offer and to also tell us what you have coming up. Excited to see you at Million Cups here on Wednesday. 
And I'm really happy to hear all of your stories again and happy that we can introduce this to other people in the audience. Uh, I will say these business principles that we're talking about with patient experience and just these basic business principles for private practices, they're critical, but they're also key business principles that are really good to understand as any business owner in any space. And I would say that uh, that any one of these people would be able to happily talk to you about systems and how to develop them and how to better engage with people. Um, that's what they're out here for. They've perfected it in their own space and they're ready to influence others. So thank you all for coming to the podcast again. And Thanks, talking to our audience about how inspiring them to think a little bit differently about what they do and to, you know, make a transition in their career, mm -hmm. it, you know, after you've had so much success. I think that's really inspiring. So thank you all for coming. Thanks, thank Shelby. Thanks, Shelby. Yes. And to all you genius entrepreneurs out there, if you're inspired, let's have a conversation. Talk about how we can take your genius to the next level and actually build an income stream out of it. So we'll see you next time.